This Sorry, conference will now be recorded. From the Panchayat Formation, Damodar Valley of India. Now, without further ado, let us welcome Mr. Saurav Pal, sir. Hello. Uh, I think I should now uh, proceed for presentation. Let me share the screen. Uh, I think the screen is visible to all of you. Okay. The topic is dinosaurs fossils recorded from Indian subcontinent. Why Indian dinosaurs? Because the movies like Jurassic Park and other movies based on prehistoric animals actually highlighted some uh, American dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus Rex and Raptors and uh, these sauropod dinosaurs like Diplodocus and Brachiosaurus. And these dinosaurs, uh, everyone know about these dinosaurs, but our information on these uh, uh, Indian dinosaur is very limited because first the reason is they are not very popular. So my presentation is an attempt, a small attempt to make this, uh, to aware, uh, to raise an awareness in, uh, among Indians about the rich heritage of dinosaur fossils from the Indian subcontinent. Uh, now I'm going to uh, proceed further. So next slide. Okay, so the, paleontologi uh, the paleontologists use the osteological detail and uh, the, the preserved uh, anatomical details uh, uh, from the fossils to reconstruct the phylogenetic tree or the cladogram. This phylogenetic uh, tree or cladogram is an hypothetical tree. It is not actually the root or path of the evolution. Rather, we suspect that this could be the, this is, this is the most probable, uh, most probable or most parsimonious uh, way uh, to proceed uh, the evolutionary track among the different forms of organisms. Although the better preserved fossils and the skeletal completeness play an important role to make the cladogram or the family tree of these extinct species more and more accurate. So according to the definition, the taxonomic definition of dinosaur, what is dinosaur? We have to understand the basic definition. Uh, the, one of the most popular taxonomic definition of dinosaur is the triceratops and faster domesticus and all the descendants of the most recent common ancestor are called as dinosaurs. Okay, what does this mean actually? If we look into this cladogram, okay, so what we can see, there are several nodes here. Okay, these are nodes. And this is branches, you can say, and these are the, uh, these are, you can say, uh, although we put uh, uh, genus and species name, but this is to make the things simplified and the simplified form. So I just put the group here so that we can better understand the thing. So this is, uh, this structure is very much like tree. The evolution also proceeded in this tree like fashion. So you can see uh, from a uh, single branch, but this is a branching. From this branch, there is again a node, and this is again branching, and then again this node, and again this is branching. So it is keep on branching. Okay. So according to the definition, so here we can see the birds. Okay. Let me uh, highlight this thing. Okay. Here we can see the birds. Okay. And this is the common node. Let me just put this thing aside. Okay. Okay. 
so here is a node dinosauria from this common node we can see the birds are also arriving some long neck dinosaur this, this is called sauropod morpho sauropod dinosaurs we have ornithischian all are arri arriving from this uh, single node we call this node dinosauria so any organism originating from this common node is should be classified as dinosaurs so bird include in this node so we can call this dinosaur why this node is not called dinosaur because this is not the recent common ancestor of triceratops and these birds the passer domesticus passer domesticus this is a uh, sparrow which belongs to this uh, bird family bird is uh, bird is a lineage of theropod dinosaur theropod dinosaur is the lineage of uh, saurischian dinosaur and saurischian dinosaurs all are descended from a common monophyletic ancestor okay so these pterosaurs and crocodiles they they, they are they were some uh, distant relative but not actually dinosaurs and i will before arriving in the uh, uh, before arriving to the dinosaurs i will basically focus on this particular node the archosauria which means ruling lizard the archosauria is the node which gave rise to crocodiles which gave rise to pterosaurs and dinosaurs and birds so let's have a look for these archosaurs the first archosaur were uh, from uh, the lower most triassic uh, although the relative of archosaurs start appearing by the end of the permian the first dinosaur is from mid triassic but we do not have substantial evidence to support that it is a sensu stricto or a proper dinosaur in taxonomic term the proper the evidence of proper dinosaur or proper a sensu stricto dinosaur in a taxonomic term is from the uh, lowermost part of the upper triassic this archosauriforms are also known from india from india these archosauriforms is a distant relative of dinosaurs their fossils their fossils include some uh, portions of jaw material uh, cervical vertebra humerus caudal vertebra uh, some uh, dentary part and pelvic bone and all these materials are known from the panchet formation of uh, the mother panchet formation the mother valley of india so you can see we can visit the field site in the rani ganj formation which is very close to asansol okay to search for this fossil you must be very familiar about this diagram in many textbook you can see this kind of diagram where they have shown distribution of flora and fauna during the early triassic or late permian uh, period uh, time period there you can see some uh, animals like listosaur this was listosaur their appearance they have found from uh, in africa madagascar india antarctica and various places similarly these leaf the glossopteris they they are known from the gondwana subcontinent including south america africa madagascar india antarctica and australia a similar assemblage is also known for the uh, this uh, pseudos uh, proteros sukidae or the proteros uh, this uh, chasmatosaurus although their name was uh, chasmatosaurus earlier but now they are known as uh, proteros sucus so their proteros sucus which is known from the panchet formation of india they they coexist with this synapsid animal this listosaurus so these these uh, listosaurs belongs to where they are very they, they are they were very close to the mammalian lineage they were synapsids that means they are more closer related to us than uh, other diapsids and archosauromorph and the closest relative of dinosaurs back to the early triassic was proterosuchus that belongs to proterosuchidae family 
that was arthrosauriformis that looks somewhat like uh, uh, somewhat like uh, crocodile or you can say somewhat like monitor lizard some, uh, but these were certainly very different from that and when we see the distribution between the archosauromorpha archosauromorpha include the sister lineage of archosaur archosaur sensu stricto which include crocodiles and their family pterosaurs and their family dinosaurs and their close relatives and dinosaurs include birds so all this uh, assemblage is representing uh, these clades that i mentioned and this is the blue one is therapsida therapsida is more closely related to mammals okay so uh, therapsida is a bigger group you can see uh, you can say that mammals also include in this therapsida as well as early relative of closer clades to mammalia are also included uh, in this therapsida like dicynodon uh, cynodon listosaurs they all belong to therapsida but they were not mammals so therapsida means mammals plus other listosaurs and cynodons and all those things so they were very abundant during the permian period but due to the permian triassic mass extinction event which is uh, which was a, one of the most major mass extinction event ever to happen on earth which is well documented by the geological evidences that caused the extinction of more than 90% of species from uh, from the face of the earth and when the uh, when the earth started reviving these uh, therapsids they struggled hard to compete with archosauromorpha but ultimately archosauromorpha took over uh, took over the earth and they dominated the earth during the whole mesozoic era and then during the kpg mass extinction event that means uh, uh, cretaceous paleogene mass extinction event 66 million years ago by the end of the dinosaurs again niches were vacant because of the extinction of dinosaurs and then again therapsids or early mammals mammals they give uh, they, uh, they they get a chance to dominate the earth and this is present we now know that mammals are this is uh, the cenozoic era the from ranging from paleogene to quaternary this is the era of mammals evidences of dinosaurs related uh, lineages from india from the middle triassic are very abundant there are stringosaurus described from india which is very distant relative of dinosaurs and other archosaurs this belong to archosauromorpha lineage this also include rhynchosaurus and then very recently described archosauriformes from india is bhari tala sucus and from the mid triassic there is an interesting fossil of yara sucus decanensis is also known this belong to this particular clade it was proper archosauria this, was, this does not belong to the sister lineage of archosauria that's an uh, quite an achievement so this belong to proper archosauria and within archosauria it is further belong to this particular uh, clade abimeta tarsalia this particular clade is uh, is very different from the crocodile this is basically their, their, their uh, tarsal bone is more like birds that is why they have gave the name abimeta tarsalia this clade include uh, prehistoric animal like pterosaurs the flying reptiles uh, most of the uh, in movies and all those textbooks children textbooks these pterosaurs are regarded as flying dinosaurs but they were not flying dinosaurs they are very closely related to dinosaurs but not sensu stricto dinosaur they were not dinosaurs they are they we uh, gave them a different clade name that is pterosaurs the flying reptiles so yarasuchus is from uh, the from the 
node which uh, gave rise to the pterosaurs and dinosaurs. And by the end Triassic in India, dinosaurs start appearing. So it can't be all of a sudden incident. So there were dinosaurs there. Uh, any uh, substantial evidence of sensor strip to dinosaurs from the mid Triassic, but there are ample of evidences indicating that dinosaurs were present during the mid of the Triassic. But their proper evidences, the, their substantial evidences, is known from the end Triassic. And not only from the in, uh, Indian subcontinent, they are also known from uh, all over the world. Their evidences are coming all over the world. So they were. Uh, well distributed geographically, well distributed during the Andriasic. And from the India, we can see very different kind of dinosaurs, like this Alvolcaria, Nembalia, Jacolopolisaurus. These all are from the Andriasic. And from the Andriasic, there were some Archosauriformes and some uh, uh, Pseudosuchian Archosaurs. Pseudosuchian Archosaurs is a lineage, Pseudosuchia is a lineage. That are uh, that uh, that includes crocodiles and their relatives. So this Tikisuchus was more closely related to crocodiles, but they do not uh, used to live in swamps or rivers like modern crocodile. Rather, they were terrestrial crocodiles, a crocodile-like animals. And these animal, this animal, which is more like modern crocodile or gavilis, it was not actually uh, belonged to the crocodile family. It just looked like that. Rather, it is not even a proper Archosauria. It was an Archosauriformes, a sister clade of Archosauria. So these early dinosaurs were sharing uh, their habitat with some terrestrial crocodiles like Tikisuchus and some Archosauriformes like Parasuchus that were phytosaurs. So going into a detail about dinosaur from the late Triassic period, the Alvolcaria malarensis, described by Chatterjee in 1987, is known from the malaria formation. This is known from few cranial materials, few axial material, which include uh, the axis bone of uh, cervical, dorsal, and caudal vertebra. This is also known from, from uh, this femur, and astragalus bone. The femur, you can see this is the fourth trochanter of the femur bone. This is asymmetric and very prominent. And this particular flange, the fourth trochanter in the femur bone, there's the muscles that attach to this femur to the caudal vertebra. So that they, they, there was a synchronized and balanced way to move their uh, hind limbs and to move their uh, using their tail for the motions. Okay, so they they had a very powerful uh, muscles which was attached uh, attached to this fourth trochanter. They, they you can see this uh, uh, this part this head of this uh, femur bone, which is uh, which uh, which indicate that uh, it was an uh, it maintained an upright posture. The dinosaurs are known for their upright posture like mammals do. Okay, so they can walk upright. And you can see the, the angle between the head and the shaft is 90 degree. So this is a, clearly a dinosaur bone. Although it was originally described as a theropod dinosaur, it may look like uh, some theropod dinosaur like a uh, raptor or something like that. But it was not actually a theropod dinosaur. Although we are not sure whether it was an Therapod dinosaur more closely related to therapod or sauropodomorpha. We are not uh, very sure about that, but the characteristic does indicate that that was it belongs to some basal saurischian dinosaur. So we can't classify as a therapod or sauropod uh, dinosaur. Rather, we classify at uh, this as a basal saurischian dinosaur. Other dinosaur from the late Tri uh, Triassic is Nambalia and Jacolopolisaurus are known from India. Some other materials uh, are also being described, but they have not, uh, the, the, but the paleontologists have not 
you had given them uh, their proper nomenclature, the genus and specific, uh, species name. So you can see it here, the Alvolcaria is categorized as Eusaurian dinosaurs. Okay, so th th these were not neither um, uh, towards the theropod nor towards the sauropodomorpha, rather they were some somewhere basal, like Euraptor. But this Nambalia and Jacklopolisaurus, they had long neck, long tail, like sauropod dinosaur, but they used to walk on their hind leg. Okay, so these were called prosauropod dinosaurs. Not sauropod dinosaur, but prosauropod dinosaurs. These, their remains are known from the upper malaria formation of Pranhita Godavari basin. So when we put the evolution with the geological time scale, we can see that here we find the very primitive dinosaur like Alvolcaria. And by the end of the late Triassic, we can see some prosauropod dinosaur from India like Nambalia, and Jacklopolisaurus, and all these dinosaurs, which are being high, uh, which are uh, their testes in the black, they are known from other subcontinents. And then we come to early Jurassic. From the early Jurassic, we have uh, we are known to have other prosauropod dinosaur or basal sauropod, very basal or primitive sauropod dinosaurs. For example, this Lamplugsaurus and Prodhania, which are also known from the upper Dharmaran, uh, which are known from Dharma, upper Dharmaran formation of Pranhita Godavari Basin. And this is their reconstruction, okay? Then we have, from the early Jurassic, we have proper sauropods. They were not like uh, the Nambalia and the Pradhania. They were proper sauropods, which include Barapasaurus tagori and the Kotasaurus uh, Yemen palensis. The Barapasaurus tagori was described by the team of Indian Statical Institute, Kolkata, while the Kotasaurus was described by the team of Geological Survey of India. You can see their mounted skeleton of Barapasaurus in the Geological Museum of ISI. And you can see the mounted skeleton of Kotasaurus in the Birla Museum of Hyderabad. When we put the cladogram or the hypothetical family tree, then we can see that in the Sauropoda node, we have Lampluxaurus and just before the sauropod that were that does not include uh, into sauropod group but does include in sauropoda morpha group that include prathania okay and among the barapasaurus and kotasaurus kotasaurus is somewhat more primitive as compared to the barapasaurus and the kotasaurus and barapasaurus they were uh, like basal sauropods they were not neosauropod like those Diplodocus, Brachiosaurus, and Camerasaurus, but they were very basal. So that is why they are very important to understand uh, the evolution or the evolutionary path of dinosaurs. From the mid Triassic, mid and uh, and, Triassic, uh, and sorry, from the mid and the end Jurassic period uh, of India is not very much rich in the dinosaur fossil remains. Up to now, only very few fragmented fossils are known from the mid to end Triassic horizons of India, which include Camerosauridae. These Camerosaurus were uh, Eusauropoda, Neosauropoda, and belong to the Macronarian family. So they're uh, there are fossils being uh, excavated from the Kutch uh, uh, from the Kutch basin that include the limb bone, ribs, and pedal claw. Although based on few teeth elements that are being recently being uh, just few years ago that uh, that uh, these uh, teeth were described from the upper Jurassic Kota formation of Telangana, 
that belong to the ornithischian clade so up to now what we are getting mostly we are getting from the theropod clade the basal saurischian and sauropodomorpha okay so we were restricted to this particular group of dinosaurs but after the discovery of these fossils we came to know that there were some dinosaurs during the jurassic period in india that belongs to this particular clade and although from this particular clade, it may belong to some stegos or nithopod uh, or some acephalus or, uh, or something like that but we are not very sure about them but we are sure that they must belong to some ornithischian dinosaur also there are there are evidences based on this uh, tooth that are also known from the upper jurassic quota formation of telangana they are also indicating presence of some dromaeosaurid a uh, dinosaur from india and dromos dromaeosaurid are very important dinosaurs they were more closely related to uh, these birds okay and other kind of theropod dinosaur we, that we will discuss uh, in the later slide but when we focus on this dromaeosaurid they was, they start appearing from the mid jurassic and they were very closely related to birds and this is and this uh, this is a very important discovery then comes to the cretaceous period from the cretaceous period the two major clade that are known from india are theropoda and among theropoda this clade the abelosaurid dinosaurs the abelosaurus and among the sauropod dinosaurs this long neck long tail huge body dinosaur we have a clade titanosauria so abelosaurid and titanosauria were two major clade that are known from the cretaceous horizons of india and when we look into this uh, evolutionary trend of sauropod dinosaurs which were long neck long tail huge body dinosaurs we can see the like cotosaurus as i already described they were from the jurassic lower jurassic period they were very basal sauropod dinosaurs and by the mid jurassic there were new sauropod dinosaurs that means a new form very advanced form of dinosaur sauropod dinosaurs start appearing on earth which include diplodocoidea which is further subdivided into the group which include sauropod dinosaurs like diplodocus and apatosaurus these amargosaurus and dicryosaurus these were some uh, these were that these belong to the diplodocus family and we also have uh, uh, genera which were very closely related to diplodocus family nigerosaurus and rabecchi rabecchi solidae as well as we have an another node which is which were running parallel to diplodocus idea this node that were that are that were known as macronarian that means huge nostril, nostril uh, because of their uh, large size nares they include dinosaurs like camarasaurus and brachiosaurus uh, like in the previous slide i have dis, uh, described there are evidences of camarasaurid dinosaurs from the mid jurassic of india and from the uh, from the macronaria and another lineage arises that include titanosauria titanosauria is a very important lineage that arrived during the early cretaceous period and they soon diversified into various clades and all the sauropod dinosaurs that are known from uh, india uh, the cretaceous horizon of india uh, are titanosaur dinosaur or dinosaurs so why the, uh, their evolutionary pattern is like this because we can see that there are this in the background you can see 
the species percentage diversity of spe uh, plant species through the jurassic and the cretaceous period of mesozoic era some uh, i have chosen some uh, important plant groups like pteridophyta some groups of gymnosperm like uh, gynecophyta cycadophyta uh, which were cycus uh, group of plant pinophyta that were, that include pine like uh, plants and angiosperm that include flowering plant and as you can see that the flowering plant the angiosperms were started uh, they start uh, appearing by the late jurassic but they were very abundant during the cretaceous period although the these uh, these gymnosperms were more abundant during the jurassic but there was some ups and downs in the plant diversity during the cretaceous period and as we can see that there was a major radiation of sauropod dinosaurs can be correlated with the sudden rise of the plant diversity so the plant with the rise in the diversity of plants there was rise in the diversity of sauropod dinosaurs and similarly when the plant diversity were falling like by the end of the jurassic period there you can see the sharp fall in the diversity of plant species so some so some major lineage of sauropod dinosaurs were terminated by the end of the jurassic which include the family of diplodocus so dinosaurs like diplodocus and apatosaurus uh, have to face extinction by the end of the jurassic and they were not the only lineage dinosaurs like camarasaurus and brachiosaurus they disappeared by the end of the jurassic all the few brachiosaurids they survived no camarasaurus able to survive uh, the late jurassic extinction event and among this clade the diplodocus idea uh, amargosaurus and their family nigerus repecosauridae and their family uh, they managed to survive the jurassic uh, extinction late jurassic extinction event but the particular clade that flourish most was titanosauria this titanosauria as you can see that uh, belongs that arising from this macronarian clade they started all of a sudden they started flourishing radiating in the lower cretaceous and there also you can see there was a rise in the plant diversity okay so with the rise in the plant diversity so what actually happened there by the end of the jurassic some major climatic changes might have triggered the extinction event of plant species and that too affected uh, the sauropod lineages so many sauropod lineages got terminated by the jurassic period and the ecological niches were vacant so the remnant of the sauropod lineage that that majorly includes titanosauria they took over all those niches and diversified and by the end of the cretaceous only titanosaurs uh, uh, comes out as an the surviving lineage of sauropod dinosaurs no other sauropod dinosaurs whether it is rabecosauridae or anything or some brachiosauridae they were not able to uh, they were not able to manage up, uh, their ex uh, existence by the uppermost cretaceous but these titanosaurs they managed to survive by the uppermost cretaceous period and talking about the titanosaur evidences from india the first titanosaur species is described from indian subcontinent the first titanosaur species named was titanosaurus indicus and soon after that another titanosaur species being described as titanosaurus blandfordi although these two genera and species are no longer valid because uh, they, these were uh, these are known fr uh, from 
uh, only caudal vertebra and the characters of caudal vertebra are not substantial to support and to define genera and species. And hence, these, uh, the, the Titanosaurus genus itself is now uh, invalid. Although two valid Titanosaur species are known from India, the first is Isaurus colberti. Initially, it was named as Titanosaurus colberti. It was it was described by the team of Indian Statical Institute. This is known from very rich amount of uh, skeletal material, as you can see in this diagram. These were very closely related to Saltosaurus. Saltosaurus were also titanosaurs. They had osteoderm, their size was average. And Huni and Matley, in 1933, they described and titanosaur and they described it as a species of antarctosaurus as antarctosaurus septentrionalis antarctosaurus is a titanosaurus species uh, genus uh, from south america but later it was uh, found that this antarctosaurus uh, the dinosaurs uh, the antarctosaurus septentrionalis from india is actually a different species so they provided a different name that is Janosaurus after the great paleontologist Sohan Lal Jain. You can see the cast of this uh, the shoulder blade this is called shoulder blade the cast of shoulder blade of Janosaurus septentrionalis you can see this in the Indian Museum of Kolkata and there you can still see the board which is uh, this, that described this scapula as Antarctosaurus, which is a, now an invalid genus name for Indian species. And this Antarctosaurus uh, was, as you can see, it was described as it was uh, a bone recovered from the Lameta beds of Bada Shimla Hill, Jabalpur district of Madhya Pradesh. And when we see the cladogram, we can see this is Isaurus. Isaurus colberti, and this is very closely related to the Saltosaurus. And according to this cladogram, the Janosaurus was very closely related to Madagascar Titanosaur, a Malagasy Titanosaurus uh, genus, Vahini. And these two Vahini and Janosaurus were very closely related to Antarctosaurus. Okay, so they were they were not a species of uh, South American genus Antarctosaurus. They, rather, they were different genus, and they in themselves belong to this particular group of dinosaur, which include dinosaurs like Patagotitan and Argentinosaurus. And you know that Patagotitan and Argentinosaurus uh, are the largest known dinosaur and the animal ever to walk on land. And this is a comparison which is showing these Patagotitan, Argentinosaurus, Giraffe Titan that belong to the uh, Brachiosauridae family. This in red one, this is Supersaurus that belong to the Diplodocus family. And this, the, this dinosaur is Bruhatkasaurus matlei. The Bruhatkasaurus was known from India. Only very few badly preserved elements that include ilium bone, tibia, caudal vertebra, fragmented femur bone was described from the Kalna Medu formation of Kaveri Basin, India. But before reaching the repository in the, uh, the Geological Survey of India, Hyderabad, these bones were crumbled to dust within the plaster jacket. So the fossil remains of Bruhatkasaurus uh, no longer exist. 
and the only evidences are few field photographs of tibia bone and ilium bone and hence the bruchiosaurus is now regarded as invalid genus but if we choose those dimension of tibia bone and based on the proportion of other titanosaur if we erect those this dinosaur it could be the largest dinosaur even surpassing the patagot titan and the argentinosaurus even the patagot titan and argentinosaurus were longer than the blue whale the largest animal the largest living animal and not only saw uh, the titanosaurus sauropod dinosaurs existed in indian subcontinent but there was there were existence of abelisaurid dinosaurs like this rajasaurus narbadensis rajasaurus was described from the balasinor uh, of gujarat uh, balasinor of uh, balasinor area of the kheda district gujarat from the lameta formation which was of upper cretaceous in age and you can see here that it had an horn like feature on top of its skull so this was the reconstructed skull of rajasaurus narbadensis and the rajasaurus narbadensis were very closely related to the majungasaurus of madagascar so what we have seen that the gynosaurus the titanosaur gynosaurus was also very closely related to the wahini of madagascar and now we have rajasaurus which is more closely related to the majungasaurus of madagascar so we can see that the indian dinosaurs of the indian dinosaur from the late cretaceous horizon are very much closely related to the dinosaurs of madagascar from the late cretaceous another dinosaur uh, uh, abelisaurid dinosaur or theropod dinosaur from the upper uh, cretaceous horizon of gujarat was rahulisaurus this was named after the village rahuli okay so you can see this is a reconstruction it was it may look like rajasaurus but it was slightly smaller and it does not uh, it didn't had any uh, this horn on top of its head another theropod dinosaur from the lameta formation of jabalpur district is a uh, lametasaurus it is known from the tibia bone this is a tibia bone tibia bone is a uh, lower hind limb bone and this is part of the pelvic girdle and it is also it was earlier being claimed that it was also known from osteoderm but now we suspect that these osteoderms or the dermal plates were not actually belong to the lametasaurus but they may belong to some uh, ankylosaurid or tank uh, they uh, what we call them the tank like uh, ornithischian dinosaur some other theropod abelosaurid dinosaurs that were described during the british uh, british period uh, Uh, are like indosaurus indosuchus camptosuchus celerosaurid jabalpuria dryptosauridae but most of these uh, these genera are either invalid or not be uh, are not being uh, substantially supported by uh, enough uh, fossil evidences and this is a but what we came to know that there were some small size theropod dinosaurs like this camptosuchus and celeros uh, celeroides and jabalpuria and there were some medium sized dinosaurs like rahulisaurus or endo endosaurus endosuchus what you can say and there were some large sized theropod dinosaurs like rajasaurus narbadensis so you, here this is an uh, paleo art where a rajasaurus you can see the larger rajasaurus and indosuchus and endosaurus as some small theropod dinosaur feeding on a carcass of a titanosaur sauropod dinosaur and when we look into the cladogram 
which is put against this geological time scale, what we can see here, these abelosaurid, uh, abelosauria and abelosauridae, this group of dinosaur, and among in this group of dinosaurs, the Indosaurus, Raholisaurus, Rajasaurus, these theropod dinosaurs were closely related and they were more closely related to the, Ma the Madagascar, uh, the dinosaurs known from the Madagascar, the Majungasaurus. So these fossil evidences are also indicating that, uh, it's also supporting the idea that during the uh, early Cretaceous period, India, Madagascar and Africa were, were geographically connected, but during the late Cretaceous period, India drifted apart from the Madagascar and they were no longer geographically uh, connected after the after this uh, late Cretaceous period. And new evidences also suggest that not only the theropod and sauropod dinosaurs are known from the Cretaceous bed of India, but there are evidences that some ornithischian dinosaur, especially that uh, that were uh, ankylosaurs, were uh, present during the late Cretaceous period of India. And among the ankylosaurs, you can see uh, there were uh, there were uh, ankylosauridae that had club in their tail, and there were sister clade nodosauridae that do not had club into their uh, in their tail, but they had long spines, scutes, and osteoderm covering their dorsal part. So they were like living tank. That is why paleontologists call them living tank. And the few evidences about them uh, are like their spikes and spines, thorns, the scutes, the scutes which were earlier suggested to have uh, a skew, the osteodomes and scutes of uh, uh, theropod dinosaur, Lamentosaurus. We now suspect that, that these scutes may belong to some uh, nodosaurid uh, or nodosaurus like animal. And there are other uh, evidences like this humerus bone, the upper uh, limb bone of uh, this uh, this forelimb, and the upper limb bone of the hind limb. This this is called femur bone. is also known from India, the Lameda formation, and there is also evidences of uh, Andrasaurus, which are basically known from the scutes and spines. Although the Andrasaurus, as th this is uh, basically known from scutes and spines, it is now no, uh, nomen dubium or an, uh, you can say invalid uh, genus known from India. Another interesting find from India is evidence of true dontids. True dontids, as I said, uh, they were very closely related to the bird family. They were dinosaurs, but they were more closely related to birds. Birds are also a kind of dinosaurs, but they had tail, they had stronger forelimb, they were not able to fly, they had still had teeth. So that, that was some major difference between the dromaeosaurid and birds. But, all, uh, but other features like they, they had some wings, protofeather and feathers, that are that were very uh, closely uh, that make them very closely related to birds. Although the only evidence of crudonted from India is the isolated tooth from the Kalamedu formation of India. Why this is interesting? Because all the fossils of crudonted are restricted from the Laurasian subcontinent, continent that is from North America, European countries, and China. And India is the only Gondwana country or continent which up to now yielded the fossil evidences of Trudonted. So there are some controversy. We are not sure whether it is a result of convergent evolution where we found a tooth of a, a Trudonted like animal or it, it might belong to a Trudonted. 
we are not very sure about that. But these two downtrends were somewhat, uh, some of their position were somewhat there, very, uh, very closely related to birds. Even in the modern birds, you can see the talons and the scales. This is a claw of an eagle. This is not uh, a feat of a non avian dinosaur. It is a feat of a uh, eagle. You can still see the reptile-like scale, the large talon, which is closely related to the uh, claw of a raptor. Okay. And not only the bones of dinosaurs are known from India, rather there are many different species of titanosaur eggs are also known from India. Their eggs are more like spherical. They're not like chicken egg, oval in shape. They were more like the eggs of turtle. Like these turtles, they dug the, uh, they dug the sand, the loose sand, and they lay hundreds of eggs in their nest. And the strategy is in the, when, the, uh, when they hatch, all these small turtles, they hatch at a time and they start migrating towards the ocean for their survival. So similar strategies were, we suspect that the similar strategies were also uh, accompanied by these, uh, or by the sauropod dinosaurs, including the titanosauria, where they lay hundreds and hundreds of spherical eggs, maybe in the open nest, maybe the nest was covered by the loose sand, or maybe the slab, uh, uh, those, those nests were covered by uh, foliage, uh, foliage or vegetation. The only evidence of hatchling or uh, sauropod titanosaur baby is known from the uh, Gujarat Lameta formation, which was associated with a very primitive snake. The, the genus name of that snake was, is Sanaje indicus. And we have found this snake uh, uh, in, over the nest of a sauropod dinosaur, titanosaur dinosaur. And there was a hatchling uh, the, uh, the bones of uh, hatchling were also preserved there. So most probably that snake was came there to feed upon, uh, to prey upon the hatchling or the nest. But all of a sudden, some sedimentation took place, maybe a collapse of a sand dune or something like that, that preserved that incident as it is. Some theropod dinosaur that uh, eggs were also known from the uh, Lameta formation of India, their eggs were more like the eggs of chicken. Okay, they, you can see the oval shape that make them different from uh, different from sauropod dinosaur eggs, which had spherical eggs. Apart from bones and eggs, the coprolites, the fossilized dung or the fossilized excreta of dinosaur are also known from India, from the Lameta, uh, uh, from the Lameta formation of Pizdura, Chandrapur district, Maharashtra. And from the same coprolite, the paleontologist also found evidences of uh, leaf that belong to the rice tribe. So as I earlier told you, the angiosperms were flourishing during the Cretaceous period of uh, Mesozoic era. And rice belonged to the angiosperm family. They were monocot, uh, they, these rice tribes belonged to the monocot uh, clade of angiosperm. And now we know that there were some rice or rice-like plant from the Cretaceous uh, period of India. Footprints that belongs to the ichno fossils are also known from the, uh, from the Indian subcontinent. The Jaisalmer Basin and the Kutch Basin, uh, some potential site, these footprints of sauropod dinosaurs, most probably macronarian, 
are known from the Kutch Basin, and this is the footprint of some theropod dinosaurs. These two uh, are known from the Jaisalmer Basin of India. And talking about the extinction of dinosaurs, the dinosaur extinction uh, is somewhat uh, controversial and somewhat a uh, very important topic because dinosaurs were very successful group. And if the KPG mass extinction never occurred, the mammals were not able to take the position in our in the ecosystem. So we are also mammals. We might not exist if the keep the KPG extinction never happened. So what was the cause of the KPG extinction? Uh, that uh, there are two major hypotheses. First is volcanic hypothesis. And according to the volcanic hypothesis, the uh, Indian subcontinent during the late Cretaceous period was over the reunion hotspot. So what, uh, what happened at the hotspot, a mantle plume rises and it causes the major uh, basalt flooding over the continent. So during the late Cretaceous period, the most um, the major part of India was flooded by the basalt due to the reunion hotspot and that gave rise to the Deccan of India, the Deccan Plateau of India. And as you can see, they cover a major part of the central and southern and western India. And these hot spot activity, especially the continent of flood basalt, is uh, somewhat, uh, according to most of the paleontologists and geologists, is one of the reasons that caused the extinction of dinosaur. But there is a problem in that hypothesis, is when the volcanic eruption was happening, there were dinosaur in India that were flourishing. For example, especially the Lameda belt uh, that was from the uppermost uh, Cretaceous period of uh, that belonged uppermost Cretaceous period from Jabalpur and from the uh, Gujarat. They are indicating, and also from Shillong, they are indicating the dinosaurs were much diverse and flourishing very well, even during the period of volcanism. Another hypothesis is asteroid impact hypothesis, where a large asteroid hit the earth that causes a series of chain reaction that causes acid rain, uh, climate change, that gave rise to the uh, one of the greatest mass extinction event. And if that asteroid, if any asteroid hit the earth, where is the crater? Crater is the depression or the impact site of an asteroid. One such crater, uh, which happened during the end Cretaceous period of Mesozoic era, is called Chicxulub Crater. It is near to the Mexico. There we can find the evidences of an asteroid impact. Asteroid impacts are very common. Uh, the evidences of uh, asteroid impact is very common on the uh, planets and satellites which are uh, tectonically inactivated uh, or inactive, like Moon and Mars. There you can see their surface are pitted. So those pitted surfaces because of the multiple asteroid and meteorite impact. But in Earth, to find an crater is uh, is a rare phenomena because in uh, uh, in Earth the tectonic activity actually rework the crust and most of these uh, uh, because of the reworking weathering erosion and all these feature vegetation cover they sometimes hide or uh, uh, or you can say destroy the evidences of asteroid impact or crater. Another such site which is four times larger than Chicxulub crater that may cause the extinction of dinosaur was Shiva, is Shiva crater. The Shiva crater is close to 
the Indian subcontinent, although the it is a bit trickier because when the impact occurred, the India the position of India was closer to the Madagascar, so it causes an impact of some somewhat like this, and later uh, due to the sea floor spreading or diver uh, or diverging plate rifted apart the impact crater so the half of the impact crater is closer to the madagascar while the half of the impact crater is closer to the uh, the gujarat Oh, okay. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, sir. Continue. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry for the trouble. Uh, I must continue. So, what I was saying that the half of the Shiva crater is close to the Madagascar, while the half of the Shiva crater is closer to the Maharashtra and the uh, Gujarat uh, state of India. And it is uh, the it is uh, basically submerged in uh, Arabian Sea. Okay, so the the Bombay High, you can see this is uh, this is an exaggerated uh, topography of underwater near the Bombay High area. So what I uh, what I am trying to tell you is that that even near the Chicxulub crater, the people. The geologists they they are looking for oil and gases because what happened when the asteroid uh, hit the crust it make the crust more permeable because of interconnected fracture and make it an ideal site for uh, petroleum and oil oil gas reserve a similar case is even in the bombay high bombay high as you know the ongc is working there it is a very rich site where you can find the oil, gas, and petroleum. And this similar phenomena may have also been rise because the asteroid hit the crust. It make the crust uh, permeable uh, because of interconnected fracture. And that could uh, be an, uh, one more indication towards an uh, asteroid hit. So if this uh, if, if uh, there are research going on uh, to the Chicxulub crater, so if this Chicxulub crater, uh, sorry, this uh, Shiva crater, if this Shiva crater uh, turns out to be the impact site of 66 million year old, then it become the major reason of uh, that caused the mass extinction event of KPG. Uh, thank you very much for listening me. I'm thankful to uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Sinha and Dr. Swain for having me, for, uh, for giving me an opportunity to talk uh, about such an interesting topic. And I'm also uh, thankful to the audience and the students of P.K. Roy Memorial College, Dhanbad, for listening me thank you very much thank you sir ananya proceed thank you sir thank you sir as the participants are here with full of vigor passion energy excitement and enthusiasm so let's start with the question hour i now hand over to the participants for the questioning This time, all the participants, uh, you can drop your questions in chat box. All the relevant questions will be answered by our speaker. So you can drop your questions in the chat box.
Okay, I can see few questions in the chat box. Like, uh, sir, all species of dinosaurs laid eggs. Uh, we are not very sure about whether all the species of dinosaur laid egg or not, because sometimes we do not get a direct, uh, direct evidence regarding that. But what we can hypothesize is that all the species of dinosaur uh, used to lay eggs because there are evidences of theropod dinosaurs including abelosaurid dinosaurs and the raptors from the mongolia they are known to lay eggs even the sauropod dinosaur used to lay egg from montana we have evidences of uh, the duckbill dinosaur or the hydrosaurid dinosaurs uh, they, they used to lay eggs so whatever evidences up to now we have is that dinosaurs used to lay eggs and, the, uh, and uh, our opinion about the species for, for which we do not get the direct evidence is uh, we use the phylogenetic brackets and their uh, and the basic uh, common uh, reasoning that uh, that these animals even these all any kind of dinosaur they used to lay eggs uh, sir, dinosaur fossils or eggs have been found in Jharkhand. Okay. From Jharkhand, uh, this Raj Mahal trap, plants and woods and leaf fossils are known. And those uh, wood fossils and plants are of Jurassic period. But up to now, no fossil evidence of dinosaurs are known from the Raj Mahal. But we can't uh, deny the possibility that there, are, there is a chance there, although we have not found any uh, substantial em uh, evidences or any evidences of dinosaur fossil from Jharkhand, but I think there is a chance that we may found dinosaur fossil from the, from the intertrapians of Raj Mahal. And even in the uh, westernmost past, uh, part of the Jharkhand, there are few uh, few uh, evidences of deccan basalt and in that deccan basalt we have intertrapians also although no proper investigation is being carried out to investigate the intertrapians of uh, deccan of jharkhand uh, but i think they could uh, yield some dinosaur fossil Uh, what is shaligram how it is called fossil okay uh, in india uh, most of the hindu they uh, they uh, call the fossils of ammonite as shaligram especially the black one that we found in the himalaya and because of its uh, they uh, as you know the ammonite fossil they are spiral in shape and because of their shape and their, their, because they are found in the Himalaya, which is a very sacred place, a uh, few people uh, might have uh, started associating with uh, those fossils with the, uh, the, the mythology and the, to Lord uh, Vishnu. And maybe they have named this, uh, this rock as Shaligram. But it is actually a fossilized ammonite especially the black one. Although ammonite fossils are also being found in the Kutch Basin from the Aryalur, the Cretaceous bed of Aryalur, but those are not black, rather they are, uh, they are some uh, uh, buff color, white color, chalky, and uh, basically composed of calcium carbonate. But the Shaligram from the Himalaya, they are basically black in color because uh, they are, uh, those fossils are what mineralized okay so this is uh, this is just uh, some uh, uh, people from india they are designating those fossil as shaligram so sometimes the bone of dinosaurs looks similar to the surrounding rocks so how do you differentiate them it is not like that 
dinosaur's bones or any fossil bone is very different from the matrix in which it is embedded or found like in the uh, the bones of uh, of dinosaur from the lameda they are of white color and they are usually found in the uh, in the limestone marl and shale so how we can uh, differentiate the marl and the shale they are of very different color from the bone and if we uh, if we found any bone or dinosaur bone in the calcium carbonate although their composition is somewhat similar they may look white uh, uh, the, the white bone may camouflage in the white color limestone but bones are actually fibrous and their top surface is very smooth and they will produce a sharp contour and sharp line and you can easily differentiate if the, those bones are exposed you can easily differentiate from the surrounding matrix and regarding the fossil bones of dinosaur from the jurassic and the uh, the triassic those bones are completely or partially being permineralized and sometimes they look like rocks but as i said if it is broken you can see the uh, some uh, the canals bone marrow or uh, cancellous bone and the outer surface is very smooth you can based on the shape and there are many uh, other feature that make them very differentiating very different from the surrounding matrix uh sir what is meghalian i am not sure uh, what is meghalian i don't know if you are asking about any genus or something like that if it is genus then i don't know although from the meghalian it seems like that belong to the meghale i am not sure about that please tell about the classification of dinosaur from the reptile okay Uh, the phylogenetic classification in the phylogenetic classification we do not use the term reptile reptile is a misnomer because if we consider the reptile equivalent to the amniota then even the uh, the homo sapiens were also reptile because all the homo sapiens and therapsids mammals they are basically originated from the synapsids reptile so technically birds are also reptile technically mammals are also reptile and that is why in the phylogenetics we use uh, we do not use the term reptile rather we use the term amniota okay and from the amniota we have several lineage like we have diapsida synapsida in synapsida we have Uh, the mammals are originated from the synapsida lineage and all other what we call them reptiles and birds are actually being originated from the diapsida and diapsida then further subdivided into various form which include the group of lizards and snakes the group which include uh, these uh, crocodiles pterosaurs and dinosaurs and uh, birds and this archos we call this group as archosaur and this archosaur is further than subdivided so what you can see is further branching and branching and branching uh in the lineages so the taxonomic definition as i told you in the presentation is uh, the clade which include triceratops and birds and the most recent common ancestor okay so any lineage which is being included uh, which is being arise from the node that gave rise to the birds uh, the recent node that gave rise to the birds and the triceratops is called as dinosaurs what is the significance of fossil dinosaur specifically okay so this is a very they this serve a very broad significance okay the as you know these fossils are not economic or directly benefiting the human society 
but in a longer term the study of fossil is uh, may help us to understand the nature the evolution the history of earth and that also include our evolution so uh, okay without the knowledge of evolution and fossil can you imagine the existence of a scientific branch called biology everything in biology makes sense in the light of evolution okay because uh, for example in human beings we have certain vestigial organs for example we have appendix we have few other vestigial organs that we uh, that we uh, no longer use so uh, people used to ask uh, that if we have certain organ that are no longer in use so why nature has provided us those organ now we know the answer that because of the evolution certain because of disuse of certain organs uh, those organs becomes vestigial okay similarly when we look towards the birds earlier people cannot imagine that birds actually came from a lineage somewhat like dinosaur the tyrannosaurus rex was very closely related to dino, uh, birds but earlier we do not know about that thing plus it give uh, it give us uh, um, academic background museums and all those things which house the fossils of dinosaurs are basically the uh, first introduction uh, a first introduction towards science for the young uh, people of our society so children uh, which are basically very curious about things like dinosaurs space and all those fascinating thing this is possible because they have a certain glimpse of working of evolution they now the children are aware of the terms like extinction uh, and many things like that so it is not we cannot restrict the significance just towards uh, just to the evolution or by the academic this is also somewhat like you can uh, call them uh, a spiritual because earlier people used to think that uh, the humans are existed as existed in the same form since the beginning of the universe but now we know that humans are also a result of progressive evolution what are the fossil founds in shahganj shahganj is a very well known site of fossilized woods and plant materials and if there are any other fossils apart from the uh, fossils of plants being found from the shahganj i am not aware of that okay next question is fossils set of jurassic time have been discovered yes there are many fossilized insects of jurassic period and cretaceous period are known from uh, known from uh, are uh, reported especially from the vietnam and all these areas they these uh, most of these insects are being trapped in the amber and uh, those are some excellent preservation and those are uh, very important to understand the uh, the ecology and the working of uh, uh, working of ecology during that time period uh, about lameta formation i am not sure about uh, what you want to know about the lameta formation but lameta formation is the sequence of uh, rock which include limestone marl conglomerate these lameta formations are found in the patches from the in the central and the western india this lameta formation is yielded many fossils including the isi saurus jainosaurus rajasaurus rohilisaurus 
some nodosaurid remains also okay next question is sir coal is fossil fuel so sir can we find fossils of dinosaur in coal mine yes we can find dinosaurs fossil and any other animal fossils from the coal mine and there is a uh, evidence there is a fossil of a very well preserved nodosaurid dinosaur from a coal mine and that that nodosaurid is somewhat like mummified you it was uh, it is not a scattered bone rather it it is known from where very well preserved armor scutes and uh, osteoderms and all these things uh, are from the coal mine sorry for interruption but there are so many question in the chat box it is uh, seriously not possible to take all the questions in very uh, this short limited period of time uh, we are running out of time here and it is not possible to uh, take all the questions here so we will move further thank you sir thank you for answering all the questions sir aranya prati sir thank you thank you very much now uh, gorav kumar ojha member of it and pr committee of this webinar final year student of bsc geology will present vote of thanks good morning to all i gorav kumar ojha uh, deem it a great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks on this memorable occasion let me first of all start by giving glory to the almighty god for making today's occasion a resounding success first and foremost i thank our special guest mr saurabh sir gsi geologist who despite his busy schedule has found uh, has found time to grace this occasion we are grateful to our respected principal sir dr bk sinha sir for his able guidance and has always encouraged us i thank him for his kindness his interest his hospitality and his unstinted support for this function i also express my heartfelt thanks to dr sagar twain sir head of the department geology for his valuable contribution guidance and encouragement in all our efforts i owe special gratitude to aditya bhaiya my senior for helping us in our pr management Ananya Sinha, Nidhi, Akash Mishra, and other members of IT and PR committee of this webinar, who worked hard behind the screen to ensure that this occasion becomes a memorable success. But last, not the least, I thank all the distinguished invitees present here, accepting our invitation, and for your cooperation in making this function a resounding success. Thank you once again, everyone, and have a nice day. just just one minute uh, just will give a digital uh, momento to our uh, speakers uh, i'll request to principal sir please uh, please give a, some digital bouquet to our uh, speaker sir Hello, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for having me here. I am happy to present. Thank you. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Now, now we will we can end this uh, webinar. Yes, sir. We can end. Sir. Thank you once again, yes. everyone, and have a nice day.